We all loved the show Smallville, and we all wished that the show would have continued. At the end of the show, Superman finally became Superman, and we finally got to see what was going to happen with the Justice League and the various characters of the DC Universe. But what happened? Well, the show ended in one heck of a fantastic finale. But what if that show didn't end? Today, we are going to be covering the comic book series, Smallville Season 11, Volume 1. This is going to tell the story of Clark Kent as he actually becomes Superman, not just Clark Kent in Smallville. And if you're wondering where you are, well, this is the Comic Story and Channel. We take your favorite comic books, the lore to your favorite video games, and the synopsis to your favorite movies and TV shows, and we turn them into an audio drama. We allow you to experience what happened in your favorite stuff, even if you don't have the time to read them or look into them or play them. So, after many, many requests right here at the channel, we are bringing you Smallville, Season 11, Volume 1. The sun begins to shine over the skyline of Metropolis. It's been six months since the day that everyone calls contact, and down on the city streets, people are going about their normal routines. Above, Oliver Queen is looking over the city from his high-rise balcony. Long night? Chloe asks as she steps out, clad in nothing but a blanket, holding two cups of coffee. Quiet as ever, he smiles. She wraps her arms around him from behind, trying to talk him into getting some sleep. Oliver agrees, but he just wants to see him first. In the apartment that she shares with her fiancé, Lois Lane rolls over in her sleep, mumbling about a barista that stole her rabbit and offering tacos. And a gentle breeze blows through the open window. In the penthouse office of Lex Corps Tower, Lex Luthor looks out the window. It is a ritual for him, a routine. He waits every morning, waiting for him. And in the distance, the red and blue blur goes flying by, and Lex leans even closer to the glass. We're right on schedule, he mutters. In space, a space station slowly orbits the planet, with one cosmonaut working on the exterior, while inside, the rest continue to monitor their equipment. Nothing out there as far as the eye can see, Alexi. One of the monitors calls to the cosmonaut on the radio. No UFOs, no giant planets, no nothing. But Alexei yells over the radio. In the distance, a massive light can be seen, and space is suddenly filled with incoming objects. Projectiles cut through the station, severing Alexei's line and sending him spinning into space. The space station trembles as the projectiles cut through it, leaking pressure into the endless vacuum. And outside, Alexei's endless spin is suddenly halted as a hand reaches out, grasping him. Inside of the station, the rest of the cosmonauts are shocked to see Alexei suddenly sitting amongst them, as the cabin is suddenly pressurizing again. This will just be another moment, ladies and gentlemen, Superman tells them as his heat vision seals the side of the station. The rest of the crew begin to thank him in Russian, their words mixing with excitement. Sorry, I haven't had a chance to learn Russian yet, but I promise I'll get right on that, he says with a smile. He turns to the rest of the crew. Does anyone happen to know English? One man steps forward, offering help. And quickly, Superman points to the side of the station that he sealed. He tells the man to contact their mission control since his repair won't last forever. Now, where can I find the nearest airlock? He finishes. Quickly, the rest of the crew point him in the right direction, and Superman takes off, leaving them all stunned. Later, in their apartment, Superman explains to Lois that the strange lights in space were there one minute and gone the next. They then talk about their postponed wedding and Clark's new suit, with Lois grabbing her husband in a warm embrace. Missed you this morning, she tells him after a kiss. The two have been the two have been little more than ships passing in the night for a while now, with Lois's late nights of writing and Clark's early mornings of superheroing. The conversation turns to how Clark thinks he can do more. You're inspiring people. That was the point of putting on the cape, wasn't it? I'd like to take it further. And have me tell the world that Superman is far beyond the stars? I'm an alien, Lois. Plain and simple. Lois explains that after the attack that took place six months ago, the world needed a breather from aliens for a while. Clark listens while suddenly zipping away in a streak, returning before the end of her sentence, fully dressed in his suit. He still believes that the world could stand to know that there is light in the universe alongside all the dark. But back in LexCorp Towers, Lex Luthor pours himself a cup of coffee as he explains his stance to the general sitting in his office. Mr. Luthor, you've been very public about your opinions of the military's perceived lack of response during contact, the general tells him, and he smiles. It got you into my office, didn't it? You're no doubt aware that we need to defend ourselves, he asks as he hands the general coffee. Like the Russians are trying to do? The general leans back in his chair, staring up at the billionaire, not giving a response. As far as the American military is concerned, the Russians are placing privatized research labs into orbit. 
he states simply. Lex turns away, looking over his city. The Russians were afraid to let the public know that they were putting a weapon into orbit. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I know that humanity needs to defend itself from outside threats. This is LexCor proposing a joint venture, he tells the officer, but the general stands, shaking his head. The last thing they want to do is scare the American people any more than they already have. That much power is an open door for abuse, Mr. Luther, he tells him. Lex suddenly turns, anger and possibly insanity in his eyes. Isn't that all Superman is? The general merely takes a sip from his coffee. Believe me when I say that as soon as I have a cause to intervene, Superman will be dealt with. Later, at a port in Metropolis. Hurry up, boys! Someone shouts as the men offload packages from one of the containers. Everyone's worried that Superman is going to show up, when suddenly an arrow slices through the air, cutting open one of the shipping bags, sending the packages everywhere. Now I'm just offended, Green Arrow calls as the thugs grab their weapons. I was here kicking ass long before that big blue slapped on his fancy pants. The thugs open fire, yelling for everyone to kill the vigilante. At least you guys remember me, slightly less offended. He quips as he flips through the air, bullets flying around him. He comes out shooting, firing twin crossbows and wrapping up one of the thugs. But the rounds keep coming and he's forced to jump behind a barricade. It's 11 on 1, Queen! I'm fine with those odds. The group moves forward with the boss smiling in the front. You ain't been out on town in months. You got married. He snares to that little nobody. Behind the wall, Oliver does some quick calculations in his head, aiming his bow upward. The arrow sails into the air, exploding over the goons' heads. Ha! You missed! And suddenly, small projectiles rain from the sky, stabbing into everyone, tasing them. Don't talk about my wife, Oliver states as he stalks forward. Suddenly, the boss cries out, and Oliver turns to see another thug on a shipping container, aiming a rocket launcher at him. The world seems to slow as the explosive flies forward, but a blue and red streak is suddenly there as the rocket detonates on the chest of Superman. I think you missed your calling, Oliver smirks as they both look at the cops picking up the thugs later on, having changed back into his civilian clothes. They both begin to walk back through the city, discussing Oliver's impending move back to Star City. Wherever you go, I can guarantee that trouble won't be far behind, Clark states, extending his hand to his friend. I'll miss you, big guy. Up in the watchtower, Chloe Sullivan Queen waits for her computer to finally finish scanning. I built you. I know you're faster than this, she grumbles. I guess this is exactly the wrong time for coffee. Lois laughs as she comes walking in. The two discuss idle chit-chat while Chloe continues to try and figure out where the strange space rift that Clark saw came from and went. Finally, the computer beeps that it's finished and both women stare in shock at the image that has appeared on screen. What is that? Lois asks. Chloe just shakes her head. Proof that I won't be leaving town as soon as I thought, she says, as they look at an image of a spacecraft entering orbit. Something, or someone, came down in a storm. Inside Metropolis General Hospital, Lex Luthor exits the MRI machine and he starts to get dressed. You did great, Mr. Luthor, the doctor tells him when he comes in with the test results. Your MRI shows that your brain, while fully grown, is essentially new, he says with amazement. He hands over the results to Lex, showing the scan of his brain. The neurotoxin that you were exposed to may have erased your memories, but it also left your mind operating at a higher percentage than normal. My father always said that I had potential to be extraordinary. Lex mused, putting down the results. Luther turns back to the doctor. If nothing's wrong, and I am in fact more than normal, why am I hallucinating? He asks. The doctor isn't quite sure, though. He does believe that learning about his sister's suicide may have been taking more of a psychological toll. Have you considered consulting a therapist? Lex merely rubs the bridge of his nose, his sister sitting against the window a few feet away, smiling. Gotta tell you, didn't know I had it in me, she smiles. Lex ignores her, turning back to the doctor, shaking his hand and making sure that he can enjoy his discretion. Just as Metropolis General will enjoy new lab equipment that LexCorp is donating, the doctor answers with a nod. As he leaves the lab, Lex is followed by his sister, who questions whether he is scared that the world will find out that he is a lunatic, or that he is cloned from one. Finally, he turns on her. Let's cut to the chase, sis. Are you a hallucination or a ghost? He hisses. Tess seems to stare off into nothing. Memories of Lex stabbing her and her dosing it with neurotoxin flashing through her mind. Next thing she knew, she was standing next to him on the street. Besides, if I was a ghost, do you honestly think that you would be the one that I would choose to hunt? Strangely, Lex manages to push his sister against the wall. If you're not a hallucination, then what are you? She doesn't know. But she does know that they could figure it out if Lex would focus on it instead of worrying about whether or not it was going to murder everyone. Lex turns away his mind once again occupied. It's only a matter of time before someone with the level of power the Superman wields begins to abuse it. Suddenly, Otis is there interrupting. No offense, Mr. Luther, but I don't think that's the best way to open up your press conference. 
Lex orders his assistant to get any research on the neurotoxin that Tess dosed him with. He pushes aside the idea of postponing the press conference. We can't waste any more time. If the military won't take steps to keep us safe, someone has to. Superman, meanwhile, is floating in orbit with Chloe coming in over the comms. How's the scan going? She asks. She begins scanning with the equipment that they gave her. But he tells her that he honestly doesn't see anything. He's already ran through his full vision spectrum and he hasn't found anything yet. With the scans complete, Superman pops into Star Labs before Chloe and Dr. Emil Hamilton can finish their apologies for sending him into space. Happy to help, he tells them. Just let me know when you two find the trajectory of that ship. Looking down at his super beeper, he sees messages that tell him that he is late for the Luther press conference. A frown crosses his face as he looks back up at his friends. Why is it I never find myself looking forward to any news coming out of Lex's mouth? Chloe just nods. Because you know better. Behind his podium, Lex clears his throat as he stands in front of the press and he begins his speech. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, I'd like to thank you for joining me on what promises to be a historic but his words are interrupted almost immediately as a hand shoots up from the crowd. Mr. Luther, the voice calls out. Typically, the question and answer portion of one of these takes place once information has been provided from which questions can be derived. Lex states, not even breaking stride as Lois Lane stands up. Where were you, Mr. Luther? She asks, ignoring the looks around her. Lex merely smiles at the crowd. Before this, I had a rather nice meal at a quaint establishment called the Ragu's. Lois pushes forward, asking where he was after his sister had declared him dead and before she died. Lex stares at the woman, telling the press that he went away for his own protection from his family's legacy and that he had to return once he received a final phone call from his sister that showed him she wasn't well. From behind, Clark slips into the crowd, whispering his apologies to his fiance. Now back on track, Lex points to the slides behind him, letting the press know that his time away was spent on reflection of the so-called heroes that were there to save humanity. Images of the attack by Apocalypse come next, and Lex points out that the very heavens have turned against them. In two days, Lex Corps will launch the first Guardian Defense platform into orbit. He finishes. The press immediately jumps in for questions, everyone fighting to be heard, but Lex ignores them all, turning his attention to Lois. Perhaps now you have a relevant question, Miss Lane, he asks. Just where do you intend to find someone to get that into orbit on such short notice, she nods. Lex breaks into a smile at the question, and he introduces the astronaut who will fly the mission, Commander Hank Henshaw. Later, Clark Kent sits down with Commander Henshaw for a one-on-one -on -one interview at the launch site's cafeteria. The man sits eating a large collection of foods. Forgive me for being rude, Commander Henshaw, he starts, but that's an awful lot of food. Henshaw waves off the comment, telling Clark that it's all a silly pre-flight superstition. The feeling of taste, touch, and other sensations like going into orbit, those are what truly make you feel alive. The only thing better than hugging my wife when I get back from a mission, he tells him, looking out the window at the shuttle. He turns back to Clark, telling him that he thought his time in space was over, that he was done. But now Luther has given him a new purpose that he didn't think that he would have again. If I could keep the world safe in the process, all the better, he tells him. Clark smiles. The world's not as bad as Luther makes it out to be. But Hank just smiles, asking if Clark is a Superman fan. He knows what that guy's trying to do, but thinks that it's just a little too reactive. Sometimes the only way to make people see the light is to force them to look at it. The interview ends in the two shake hands, with Hank leaving to go prep for the lunch as he walks through the cafeteria. Get home safe, Hank, Clark calls out to him. What goes up must come down, right? Hank calls over his shoulder. And at Star Labs, Chloe is watching the screens that show the impending launch. At least we know where one spaceship is about to streak through the Kansas sky, she mutters to herself. But Dr. Hamilton motions her over to his screen. That's that all we know, Chloe, he tells her, pointing at the data. The data that Superman collected gave them the trajectory of where the ship landed. He points to the location on the map, which makes Chloe roll her eyes. Why would anything crash anywhere else? At the launch site, Clark and Lois watch as the rocket sails into the sky under a jet stream of fire. Clark reaches out with his powers, hearing Hank send status updates to Mission Control. The boosters from the rocket disconnect, falling back to Earth as the shuttle pushes further. Preparing for fuel tank separation in three, two, Hank calls, his voice portraying the smile on his face. When suddenly the alarms begin to beep within the shuttle, and Hank's smile disappears. What the hell? He mutters. Something's gone wrong. Clark says back on the ground, and suddenly Lois and Clark watch as the shuttle begins to flare with an explosion. Over in the cornfield in Smallville, the pilot of the mysterious craft that landed looks up into the sky, seeing the flare. This looks like a job for Superman, they whisper. On the ground, Clark puts his suit on in a flash, taking him to the sky as Superman. Watchtower, I need a rundown, 
He calls over his comms as he races through the fiery sky. Chloe comes online immediately telling him that the shuttle has six crew members who are all within the forward cabin. Readings indicate a misfire in the platform of the cargo bay. You need to put it out before it hits the fuel tanks, she tells him. Working on it! He cries as he flies through the fire from the engines. A blast of super breath freezes it quickly and he reaches out ripping the fuel tanks free of the shuttle, tossing them back to the ground. After a brief moment, he pauses, watching the shuttle streak away but a quick scan with his x-ray vision shows a massive radiation leak from the platform's power cell. Even if they hit orbit, the crew won't survive, he tells Watchtower as he takes off after the shuttle again. Patch me through to mission control. Superman comes up fast on the shuttle's left side with Henshaw turning, having already connected through the comms. What can I do for you, Superman? He asks, his voice strained. You can survive, Commander. I'm giving you fair warning that your cabin is about to be depressurized. Superman tells him that he needs to open the cabin so that he can start ferrying the crew back to Earth. Henshaw nods. He needs to keep the shuttle going. It can't fall back to Earth with this much radiation. Do it, Superman. Save the day already, he shouts. Superman makes two trips, dropping the astronauts off with each landing. And finally, he speeds back up to the shuttle, pushing himself as fast as he can go. The air quakes behind him, and the sound of the sound barrier breaking echoes below. And on board, the oxygen is almost at zero, with the radiation burning through Henshaw. He looks at his hands, the skin beginning to flake off. All he can say as he gasps is, It burns. Superman flies faster. Hell of a last thing. Hank whispers as he stares out the window into space, his vision beginning to dim. To feel. Superman flies faster, faster than he ever has before, with the EMTs hitting Henshaw with the defibrillator outside of LexCorp. As Superman standing close behind them. The machine begins to beep, and the drivers begin to scramble, but Superman tells them to take him to Star Labs where they can help him. Superman! Superman! Lois yells as she comes running over, ducking beneath the police tape. Anger crosses the Man of Steel's face, and he tells her simply, I have a message from Clark Kent. He won't be home for breakfast. On top of the LexCorp building, Luther stares off into space, a smile on his face. Otis comes up trying to tell him about the neurotoxin, but Lex tells him it can wait. He and Superman are about to have a very interesting conversation. And there you have it, the first half of Smallville Season 11, Volume 1. Now, we are going to end it there because I wanted you to get a flavor for what Smallville basically was, what the comic series is, before we decide if we're going to move forward at this. Now, I need you guys to give this video a like and tell me in the comments that you want more Smallville. Unlike a lot of our series, since this is such an old television series and I don't know if anybody really even cares, we're going to do this one video and then gauge on the reaction if we should do more of these. I don't want to turn it into a series where we get halfway through and everyone has stopped watching. So, in order to give you an idea as to what is coming in the Smallville series, here's a general idea of what each of the volumes are because this is a very long series if we end up doing it. It's paced out with a lot of exposition like the TV show, so we can't really condense it down. We pretty much have to give you everything that is available to us, which as you can tell, creates for some very long videos. So if this is what you want, oh my god, are you going to get a ton of these? You're going to love it. It's going to be great. So with the Smallville Season 11, obviously this first volume is just reintroducing the characters and the new existence of Superman. Volume 2, you're going to get to see Batman. Volume 3 is going to be like The Flash and stuff like that happening on. Volume 4 is going to be more Booster Gold. Volume 5, we're going to meet Wonder Woman. 6, we're going to fight against Brainiac. 7, uh, somewhat important, becomes a Green Lantern. 8 is going to be Constantine as Zatanna. I think based upon what I was reading about it. And then in volume nine, we're going to get the true finale to where Smallville should have gone if they had a budget. So if you want this, I need to know because we're going to, like I said, base the a reaction of this video. If you guys want more of Smallville because it's such an old series. So I want to do it, but it's on you guys. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you very soon right here at the comic story and channel. And you can not only tell me in the comments down below or by giving this video a like or sharing it with your friends, but you can also follow me on Twitter at comic story and just spam my notifications. More Smallville, more Smallville. If you do that, it will let me know you want more Smallville. We're hoping to do this as a weekly series. So if it is something you want, you're going to get a weekly episode of Smallville that stretches out for a couple of months. I mean, doesn't that sound good? I'll see you guys next time.